Seattle rocked by magnitude 3.2 quake and aftershocks. Rocking Washington, Puget Sound area, and a few hours later, a 4.2 rocks Canada to the north of Vancouver. Let's take a look at that. This is it right here, as we can see. North of Vancouver Island, 4.2 magnitude, UTC time 6.58. I got that wrong. I think this is, a, okay, this is before the quake. November 9th, UTC 6.58. Okay, no, this is 1858. Okay, that, I didn't get it wrong. Okay, so this one is UTC 513. So this is three hours before the Canadian quake. I'm sorry about that. Okay, this is it. This is the area, Seattle. Greater Seattle area. 3.2 magnitude. And after that, we had the 4.2 in Canada. Three hours later. And let's go back to Sizewell Berkeley if it wakes up. Okay, here we are. This is it right here. And this is it right here. Of course, this is the, the same San Andreas area subduction zone. I just wanted to show you that this whole area is connected here. Um, because of the fact that the magma chambers are basically acting as one. It's a body coming from this area here, the Baja area, the Mexico-US border, feeding up these volcanic fields, Salt and Buttes, Ridgecrest Costa Volcanic Field, Long Valley Caldera Supervolcano, all these areas here. Nevada, the whole thing is a, is, is a volcanic field. It is very sp Nevada is sparsely populated anyway. And all of this here connects through the Snake River Plain into Yellowstone. Let's go to the volcano hotspot tectonic, present-day tectonic picture. This is it right here. Basin and Range Province, Aubrey Brooks, and this is the uh, Yellowstone Plateau hotspot here. Basin and range, and going down, we have a very nice illustration of it right here. That's more simple, I guess you would say. The mantle plume and the plume head underlying depleted lithospheric mantle. Basically, it's the whole area, as you can see. And even better play, okay, oh, this is uh, more of it here, the calderas. As you can see, this is Nevada right here. Nevada, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming is up here somewhere. Idaho, Wyoming. And this is where we had our quake around here. Puget Sound area. This is what we're talking about now. Uh, if you see the video just before this one, California strange quake swarms. This is the picture I have on the cover. Image uh, quakes uh, swarms in Nevada connect to Yellowstone. The volcanic fields next to Ridgecrest connect to Yellowstone. And this is it right here. This is Nevada here. Snake River Plain all the way to Utah. To, uh, sorry, to uh, Ye uh, Yellowstone right there. And some pictures of that area there. Cinder cones right there in uh, Nevada. Okay, going back to this. The megathrust earthquakes, let's read it for the, uh, all right, well, how many people felt it? We've, we have a, about 420 people that have felt it. Let's look at the tectonic plates and the faults. Okay, there, uh, if we take away the shake map, maybe you can see it better. Um, so you can see the fault lines right there. Okay, this is it. And let's go in a little bit more. San Andreas right there. And let's go a little bit more. There you go. Um, 
they're finding new fault lines all the time. Of course, wherever you have a river, you have a fault line. Know that. Wherever you have a river, you have a fault line. Okay, let's go back down here. I'm trying to find Yellowstone for you. It's right around there. Okay. All right. And that's the crack that we know. The big crack, 2,200 miles going across the United States, going towards Missouri, New Madrid, Missouri, meeting the other crack that goes to from um, Mississippi all the way to flanking the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence Seaway, which is the New Madrid seismic zone, which should be called Rift Valley because it's breaking. That area is breaking, sloughing off towards the southeast. And now talking about the 3.2 here. The 420 people felt it so far, reported feeling it. Let's see, renew it to see more, any more? Okay, 422. They're still reporting that they felt it. And uh, let's see what the USGS says concerning this. Tectonic summary. Earthquakes in the Pacific Northwest, states of Washington and Oregon, result from slip on faults in a variety of geographic and geologic settings. Earthquakes in much of the region are a consequence of stress associated with motion of the Juan de Fuca oceanic plate to the northeast with respect to the North American continental plate at the rate of several centimeters each year. This relative motion is largely made possible because the Juan de Fuca plate descends into the Earth's mantle below the North America continent is a subduction zone called the Cascadia subduction zone which extends from northwest California through western Oregon, western Washington to Vancouver Island, Canada. Relative plate motion that is not accommodated by subduction of the Juan de Fuca plate is accommodated by deformation of the overriding North American plates. Plate earthquakes are associated with both the subduction process and the deformation of the overriding North American plate. Megathrust earthquakes are, so ca are called interplate or plate boundary quakes in the context of the subduction zone, seismicity resulting from the rupture of the principal interface between the subduction of Juan de Fuca plate and overriding North America plate. The last great megathrust earthquake Cascadia zone was 700, a 1,000 kilometer long rupture zone documented by studies of the resulting tsunami in Japan by Native American oral traditions and by geologic deposits from tsunami and offshore turbidity flows caused by intense shaking and ground deformation so did with the earthquake. Most of the megathrust interface between Juan de Fuca plate and North America plate has not been seismically active in the decades during which it has been monitored by seismometers, except for perhaps near Cape Mendocino, where the Gorda microplate commonly uh, demarked demarcated within the, the uh, broader Juan de Fuca plate and at one location offshore from Astoria, Oregon. Uh, together with the geologic evidence for the 1700 and earlier great earthquakes, the accumulation of compressive tectonic strain implies that the recent quiescence the quietness, of most of the cascaded subduction zone megathrust is temporary and that the ongoing subduction product will cause large and great earthquakes in the future. Crustal earthquakes, deep earthquakes, volcanic earthquakes swarm, uh, describing the temporal distribution of events in the sequence of earthquakes rather than a specific type or locale of earthquake. Term is used to denote a sequence of earthquakes in a small geographic area that are of similar size in contrast to the main shock aftershock sequence in which a larger main shock perhaps preceded by fewer smaller foreshocks is followed and sequenced by numerous smaller shocks that occur in the general decrease rate in time. Okay, this is an area which is quiet now, but which will leave, as we know, which will uh, give large, will cause large and great earthquakes in the future. I'll leave links below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, 
you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.